Yeah, my name is Aftar Hussain. Um, I'm from uh, IIT Hyderabad, not IIT Hyderabad, but that's okay. Uh, you know, there are two separate institutes. Um, so we're, uh, I'm a professor there and I, I basically had a lab called Flex Lab. And uh, there we, we do a lot of things on flexible electronics, um, but uh, our main focus is on creating uh, sensor systems um, for, you know, variable applications, biomedical applications. And um, you guys probably know all, like one of the easier ways of getting, uh, you know, started with these kinds of work is um, using off the shelf components and then trying to sort of see whether you can model them well. And one of the components that we uh, we use very often is is, is a velostat thin film, which is basically a piezo resistive thin film. It's a it's a carbon black, black impregnated um, polyurethane film very easily available in the market, not so expensive either. So, and, and one of the nice things about it is that it's conductive, slightly conductive. I mean, it has reasonable resistance, but when you apply some pressure on it, it's resistance decreases, I mean, which is piezo resistive. So you can basically then get a lot of information from that change in resistance in terms of, you know, uh, figuring out pressure or sensing pressure. So that's what we have done. I mean, and uh, so our, our, in this work, um, our major challenge or what we're trying to solve is trying to characterize or trying to scale the models that we have developed for uh, these uh, physical resistive sensors. And we have done that. I mean, we've done modeling and, you know, we have actually, uh, like we have a paper in LEPS 2022 last year, uh, where we were doing modeling for like one or, you know, a couple of pixels and figuring out how it works. But now we want to go into something like, let's say a 32 by 32 array of uh, pressure sensors. And, and the way we fabricate it is, um, you know, we, it's a very simple, like a crossbar architecture. So you have copper electrodes on both sides of the, of the thin film uh, in vertical and horizontal orientation. And the moment you sort of press something or, you know, give it a weight, it gives you, uh, like you have to raster scan all the, all the resistance, of course. But once you're able to do that, you will be able to get the pressure profile on that area. The problem is characterizing each and every one of these pixels because they are, it, you can imagine 32 by 32 sensors means 1024 individual pixels and characterizing each and every one of them and figuring out what their characteristics are and modeling them so that you get a final model for your entire map is, 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 a, is a challenging task. So this is what we are trying to solve here. Now, like I said, last year we had this, uh, you know, we we proposed this architecture in which we said, um, you know, the resistance is kind of um, an exponential, uh, like an inverse exponential for uh, for the weight that you're putting in. And we had some, uh, you know, so you can basically look at that paper. We had some results in that as well. So at the end of the day, I mean, it 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 ends up that we can basically model a pixel of this. Uh, is a resistive center using two parameters. Okay, you can call them in this paper, we call them A and B, um, or you can call them whatever you want. I mean, in, in inverse, when we're looking at output voltage versus weight, we call them C and K. But at the end of the day, you need two parameters to characterize your, uh, you know, uh, your device. Now, if I, so again, this is for a single pixel. So again, the problem is if I do it for every pixel in my uh, architecture, it then turns out to have, like, I then have a total of 2000, close to 2000 uh, values of, of parameters for the entire uh, matrix. And then if I want to characterize them or figure out what the values of these A and B are, then again, I have to take readings for every one of those pixels for at least 10 or 12 readings. So that gives me a, a total of 12,000 readings that I have to take just to characterize one, uh, one map. So, that is where the, the problem is. And, and general characteristics looks like this. I mean, for some value of C and K, you can actually get a reasonable uh, fit for that as well. Now, so this is the calibration challenge that I'm talking about. So we have 1024 sensors in this, in, in this array, and we have uh, test leads to 2000 uh, parameters. And typically we do like a 12 measurement for each sensors, just to make sure that our regression is, is, is correct. Uh, that ends up, you know, with some like 12,000 measurements for the entire map, which is of course very cumbersome. And, uh, and one of the other problems is, again, I don't know if you've worked with 
uh, well stack it's it's not uh, it's it's one of those thin films that is actually uh, not very reliable i mean at least uh, from our experiments uh, we if we figured out that it's its characteristics the basically changes with every pixel i mean the way you fabricate it because these are sometimes like sort of hand fabricated um, you know uh, and depending on how the the concentration of your um, you know carbon black in the polymer is its characteristics are not the same so you can't assume that all the pixels are the same characteristics so that is one of the problems that we we are we are trying to solve in this so um, what we did is uh, we did some measurements and again we went pixel by pixel as well but we 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 came up with some strategies in which we can sort of minimize the number of parameters that we are using and then minimize the number of readings that we need to be able to characterize or recharacterize uh, our our maps uh, more effectively so one of the first things we did is we, we wanted to see how the characterization like or the characteristics change row wise and column wise i mean in terms of if you're looking at a crossbar architecture is there a directional bias in changes of characteristic from in, in a row versus a column and again row a row will have like let's say row two uh, randomly or you have 32 columns like for which, like 32 pixels in, in in all the columns and let's say you take column four that will also have um, 32 pixels and one of the things that we realize is that uh, the even though there is a slight change in the you know in the characteristics as you can see for i mean you can have like a mean characteristic going through for both row and column the variations are are, are not very significant so that's actually a good thing so that's one of the nice things that we had the the other thing that we observed is if you vary the value of k i mean because k is the exponential here i mean in the equation so that actually makes a big diff bigger difference than the the constant which is which makes a lot of mathematical sense anyway so those are the things that we observe and then because of that we then you know started looking at uh, modeling k a, a little better so for example let's say if i just plot i mean so one of the things we do is then we basically do a regression for all of them individually plot the like get the value of c and k for the individual uh, pixels for all of these um, uh, readings and then let's I try to see how for example k varies over this row and column for all the sensor right and, and see whether there is clustering because this is when i'm saying 0 to 32 these are individual clusters one after the other so that we are trying to see whether there is a physical clustering and we had reason to believe that there should be because because again changes in characterizations are uh, characteristics are happening because of the fact that um, there are changes in carbon concentration or the way we fabricated or so on so if uh, you know two pixels are together or close by we were hoping that their characteristics will be similar and we did find that i mean there is a trend here I mean, it's, it's not like uh, so you can see clusterings clearly uh, you know uh, based on you know uh, uh, closeness of course there is of course like some some jumps here and there as well but so so one of the things that we found out is like particularly k because that's what we are concentrating on um, can basically show some clustering uh, uh, you know uh, when we have uh, closeness in like physical proximity so uh, then we actually came up with this idea of you know how we can reduce the number of parameters for the map and uh, you know, ideally, I mean, so this is the ideal case, or let's say not the ideal case, the most non-ideal case, uh, at least from the point of view of uh, you know uh, computations, um, that we have all the you know two thousand parameters. The best case scenario is let's say we can have a two-parameter model for the entire uh, you know mat, and all of the pixels sort of behave in the same way. Um, the way we so uh, what we did is the way we calculated these uh, you know so. These parameters, like the two parameter, four parameters, 64 and uh, 2048, uh, is that for the two parameter model, uh, we assumed that all of the uh, pixels are behaving the same way, that, 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 that they're showing the same characteristics. And given a weight, um, uh, you know, in this case, we basically had um, sort of individual people standing on the maps and, uh, you know, uh, 
like you know, knowing their weight, we are able to know what the, the, the humidity pressure on the map is and then figure out how, how much off we are. And based on that, we back characterized it, categorize what the values of C and K should be individual values, like two values, so that we get the best accuracy possible. We did that for 50 people. And again, uh, so uh, that is that is one set of experiments that we did. Now, for the four parameter model, we then assumed that, let's say, we, uh, uh, you know, we divided the math into two parts. I mean, one uh, section and like two sections because people are standing as, uh, you know, on the mat. So we basically, let's say, divided like right foot and left foot sections. And for the right foot section, we had two parameters, like left foot section, we had two parameters so as a four parameter model. And, but then after that, we did all the calculations in the same way. I mean, fitted it, you know, to get the regression out and, uh, you know, minimize the error that we were getting based on the weights that we already knew, like that was the ground rule we were using. Um, interestingly, uh, we then went to what we call the 64 parameter model in which we were basically assuming that one of the rows or columns would have the same uh, values of uh, parameters. And again, we didn't know whether we should assign the rows or columns, but uh, from our previous analysis of one of the rows and columns, we realized that, uh, you know, column wise variation in K was lower. So we thought let's, uh, uh, you know, assign one value of K or C for, for a column and then let's change it for the rows. So then that means you have 32 different, um, you know, values of C and K, which is 64 parameters. So again, we, we did the same calculations and figured out what the best fit strategy would be, what, what those 64 parameters would be. And of course you have the, the, uh, this 2048 parameter model. Is. So this is how we did the experiments. I mean, we have this mat. This is like a this is a flex material on uh, below it you have the uh, you know uh, the copper electrodes printed on it and then the velocity and then on the bottom material again uh, uh, copper electrodes are printed so we had this uh, uh, you know uh, these uh, 50 participants sort of uh, uh, give their uh, data and then we try to analyze that so so one of the things so uh, one of the integrities of this is that you know, when you're, when people are standing, uh, you know, it's, it's actually very hard to figure out which frame because we are taking 20 frames per second for, from this, uh, mat. So which frame to take for that particular person itself is actually a task. I mean, a, a, you know, computational task in itself. So one of the ways we did it is by, uh, you know, adding up all the, uh, all the pressure in that, uh, frame and then selecting a frame in the middle of the region where there is almost a near zero slope for that cumulative pressure. So that assuming that now that there is a st steady state um, that the person is standing. And that is the that is the frame that we took for our analysis. Uh, eventually, when we look, when we did all the analysis for all the all the you know individuals, of course, it's it's uh, uh, it's intuitive that the more parameters you add, the better accuracy you get. But the, the real analysis, what we want to do is how much better accuracy you get for adding how many parameters, like what do, what does, for example, a two parameter model give you, uh, in this case, you know, you're getting like median accuracy is like, you know, 11%, uh, whereas uh, compared to a sort of median error of 11% compared to a four parameter or a 64 parameter model. So this is what we are basically presenting in this work. Um, and we, and one of the main applications for this is, you know, because if you're using it, using these kinds of maps for, for example, any kind of bio, uh, you know, bandicle application for variable applications. Uh, in fact, in our uh, lab, we are making a smart chair as well, in which, you know, you can, it will tell you whether your sitting posture is right or not and alarm you about these things. So if you're using these kinds of applications, you want a near real time, um, you know, analysis of your pressure distribution, as well as not a lot of compute power should go into it because it's most of these are edge computed uh, uh, you know, systems. So that is why reducing the number of parameters and having lower uh, parameters uh, uh, is, is basically conducive to the lower RAMs that you typically get in edge computing devices. Um, so yeah, that is the, uh, that's our work. And, and with the 64 parameter model, you, you, we, we are able to get like reasonable results uh, for the subject. Okay, um, thank you. That's, that's it. Thank you very much.